Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Progress. My name is Corey, and today we're going to be taking a look at cleaning the water loop in my Cold Water Ryzen PC. I built this PC back in April of 2018, and I've been using it daily ever since. I used EK Cryofuel Concentrate in distilled water for my uh, coolant, and I have not changed it since. I did flush it, I sorry, not flush it, I did drain it and refill it once when I installed the Aorus um, Water Force 1080 Ti. I originally had a Vega 64 with a EK water block on it. Um, I swapped that out last year for this uh, 1080 Ti Water Force edition. Um, all I did was drain the coolant and refill it with the same stuff. That's why the water level is a little bit lower. I didn't top it up completely. I've had zero leaks. Um, it has held up very well. Uh, let me just quickly go through some of the components in the system. We have a Ryzen 7 2700X. We have 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z 3200 MHz RAM. We have the GTX 1080 Ti Water Force Edition. We have the um, X470 uh, Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard from Asus and a Corsair, Corsair 1000 uh, HX1000i power supply powering the entire thing. Um, as far as cooling components go, we have the EK uh, Revo D5 pump reservoir combo. We have an EK AM4 water block. We have the water force water block that's on the 1080 Ti. And I have a cool stream, e EK cool stream 420 mil rad across the top. Um, with 340 mil Noctua fans bringing air into the case through the front and 320 mil, or sorry, 140 mil uh, Noctua fans exhausting air out the top for equal airflow. Um, and it's all put together by 16 mil soft tubing because I have no interest in trying to bend hard tubing right now. Um, I like to change things out too often to bother with that. Maybe someday, but not right now. Um, one thing I have noticed over the past couple of years is the tubing seems to have gone from a uh, very clear to more of an opaque color. Um, the reservoir still looks good. The water block looks good from what I can see through the plexiglass, but the only way to know for sure is to actually take this thing apart and see what we got. So first off, what I'm going to do is with the machine running, I'm just going to take off the glass side panel here. And see how dusty it is inside. Oh yeah, it's actually though for two years of not not once cleaning this thing out. It's not looking too bad. There's a light layer of dust on the uh, graphics card. There's some cobwebs in here, which are kind of gross. Um, but as far as everything else goes, it's actually not too bad. I think a quick blow with some compressed air will clean this right out. Um, now, as far as the filters go, this will be a good test to see how well they filtered the air uh, all these years. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to remove the filters. I'm going to clean them. I'm going to give this a blow with some compressed air and uh, I'll be back and we will continue with cleaning the loop.
Okay, so we're back from cleaning the inside of the case. And one thing I noticed is that I would say the filters on the Fantex uh, M2 Lux case probably removed about 90% of the dust. There actually wasn't uh, a whole lot of dust inside the case for two years of use. And when I say I haven't cleaned it in two years, I really haven't cleaned it in two years. And you could see that uh, evidence on the front grill of the intake here. It was covered with white dust, uh, whatever gross stuff that was. Um, but now I have vacuumed it off. Um, in between the main grill and the filter here, there was quite a bit of dust built up. Um, but beyond the filter, inside the fan area and that, there actually wasn't a whole lot. So a little earlier when I told you that there was three intake fans on the front of the case, I was actually wrong. I had only put two 140 mil Noctua intake fans on it, um, which would probably make it a little bit more of a negative pressure. However, I think the resistance of going through the radiator at the top made it almost balanced because you would think that if it was a negative pressure, it would be sucking air in and dust in through here. And the level of dust that was inside the PC, I wouldn't think that... Uh, it was actually, I don't think that was the case. I think it was actually pretty balanced. Um, the uh, power supply doesn't seem to have ran its fan at high speed a whole lot, um, considering I barely had to clean anything off of the power supply grill. Uh, this filter um, goes on the bottom. There's no fans there, so it was pretty clean. There was a very, very small amount of dust on the inside of the top filter on the top of the case. And basically all the dust was being filtered by the front. And again, I would say it was about 90% efficient because it kept a lot of dust outside of the case. So what I did, vacuumed off all the grills, vacuumed off the hard stuff off the top and uh, non-electronic parts of the case um, with the uh, regular house vacuum. I wouldn't recommend vacuuming anything where there's components um, due to static electricity. I know components are a lot better nowadays, but you never know. Um, so yeah, I just basically took it in, put the shop vac hose right here uh, in the workshop and blew it all off with compressed air. And there actually wasn't a whole lot of dust that came out, so it worked out pretty well. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do here is we're gonna wanna actually drain the loop. Um, of any water that is currently inside it. So in order to do that, <clears throat> in order to do that, I'm gonna turn the case around. And you're gonna be able to see right here, I've put a drain valve. When you're building a custom water loop, always put in a drain valve. It makes it so much more convenient for later on um, when you have to drain the loop. So basically what I'm gonna do is I have a fitting here that basically has a thread on one side converted to a spigot on the other that I can connect a piece of tubing to. And I can put the other end of the tubing down here into a clean jug. That way I can take a look and inspect the uh, coolant as it comes out and see how good of a job it did. Um, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is vent the system and I'm going to do that by removing the top off the reservoir so that air has a place to get out. A top vent on the rad would be ideal but I don't have that so I'm not going to do that. Next I'm just going to open up the valve on the spigot here and watch all the coolant drain into the bucket. So, as you can see, we haven't got all of it, obviously. So what we're gonna need to do is actually tilt this a little bit so that we can get the rest of it draining out. We're gonna tilt it one way, then we're gonna tilt it the other way. And here it sounds like a straw. Draining the rad. And if you can see, 
while we're doing this, you can see the bubbles and everything moving around in here. So we just have to do this over and over a few times until we get it right and get as much drained out as we can. And be sure not to make the mistake that I just made by marking up my desk, tilting the computer back and forth. Get yourself a towel to put down underneath it. Easier for water cleanup anyway if anything spills. Okay, after a few minutes of tilting it back and forth, it looks like we've got most of the liquid out of the loop. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to remove the tubing off of the uh, CPU block so that we can take a closer look at it and see what kind of shape it's in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some paper towels down so that if anything spills, we don't get other components wet. And this is always a good practice to do because you've got an expensive GPU sitting right underneath your CPU and nobody wants to replace that because they got it wet. Okay, so I'm just going to take the connections off of here and we'll remove the block and we'll see what kind of shape it's in. And one thing to remember with AM4 sockets is sometimes they do uh, stick to the processor with the thermal paste. So try and give it a little slight twist before pulling it off. Oh boy. And that's why we put the paper towels down. Also, don't forget if it's an RGB block, remove the RGB cable first or else you'll be stuck not being able to remove the block. So the surface of the block, even with the thermal paste on, still looks pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and get this thing torn down and see what kind of shape it's in. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove your fittings out of your block. If you don't have, uh, if you can't do it by hand, remember a 5 16 Allen key, any kind will fit into at least the EK fittings. Um, and you can just apply a little bit of pressure and start them coming out and then you take the rest out by hand. Um, I've cleaned off the block with some isopropyl alcohol, got the thermal paste off of there. And uh, what you want to do is just take a quick look at the fittings and uh, just make sure that the, um, the O-ring isn't cracked. Uh, you don't see any dirt or anything on there and uh, it's not dried out. So those ones look good. Next, you grab an Allen key and take apart the block. Um, I'm just going to take a look at these four screws here, remove them. So now you're going to remove the last screw. And I did just want to point out that, um, I did use Noctua thermal paste on this and just taking a look at it, it's still a nice shiny mirror finish on here after I cleaned it up with some isopropyl alcohol. So there was absolutely no corrosion or anything that took place there. So we're going to remove the block and basically all we're going to do now that the screws are out is we're just going to pry on that a little bit and make sure you protect that gasket. Okay, so there's the block, one side and the other side. Wow. Okay. So for one year, sorry, two years of use, like there is no real corrosion, no algae, nothing in there. Um, either side of the block, they, it both looks amazing. Um, I mean, I don't know what other tests to do here, but cryofuel, good job, EK. Um, I was holding off to buy a new coolant until I saw what my blocks looked like. Um, but yeah, um, after seeing this, I'm going to be going out and getting another bottle of uh, EK cryofuel concentrate. And um, yeah, it looks like it's done the trick. So, I mean, there's a, a few little chunks in there, um, probably just stuff that came out of the, the pump or the rad or other parts of the uh, uh, system. But yeah, like it's, I mean, we'll take the little razor blade kind of thing off of there and... Yeah, like those channels are clear. Like those channels are nice. One thing you want to do is you want to check with your manufacturer 
uh, whoever made your block before you clean it. Um, you can use vinegar uh, if it's a copper block. They say not to use vinegar on a um, nickel plated block. They say only warm soapy water. I mean, if your block is damaged and it's really corroded anyway, you can probably try anything. But if your block is in nice condition like this, um, it's it's great to, uh, you know, just use soap and water, a little bit of a dab of dish soap in uh, some warm soapy water and you're good to go. Give it a quick clean and uh, maybe a soft toothbrush if you need to scrub it a little bit. But I mean, by the looks of this, I'm, I'm not thinking I'm gonna have to do very much of that at all. So I'm very happy with my EK Cryofuel. Um, I mean, obviously this isn't sponsored or anything, but I, it, they did a good job. It lasted two years. So if you're on the fence about what kind of coolant you want to buy, I give this one my endorsement. Uh, personal two-year test. So I got a bin here with just some warm water and a little bit of palm olive. Um, one thing I'm noticing here is that the block itself has this uh, RGB wrap on it. So I don't want to get that wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that RGB wrap off first. Okay, the rest of this can all be submerged in water. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do here is just toss this in. I've got a toothbrush here and I'm going to get it wet. And I'm just going to go around that outer perimeter and inside here. Give it a little brush with the toothbrush. Now obviously you can do this right in your own kitchen sink. Make it a little bit easier and cleaner, but I wanted to get this on camera. So, so I drag in my camera over there. I'll drag a bin of water over here. Oh, just a nice coating there. Give it a nice little scrub. Give the gasket a nice little wash. Now you can apply a little bit of gasket grease to this if you want um, to keep the gasket nice and healthy. It's up to you. I don't think you need to. Um, I don't think I'm going to for this part. <laughs> Okay, while we're waiting for the CPU block to dry before we can move on with the distilled water flush, one thing I wanted to do is take a look at the coolant that came out of the loop and see what kind of condition it's in. So I've got a nice clean peanut butter jar here that I just washed and I'm going to pour, pour it fast so that if there are any solids I can get them in here. So that is the clear cryofuel solution. And uh, yeah, there's see a few little bits of metal floating, like not very much. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see a few little bits of the metal floating in there. But I would say overall it is pretty good. Um, that's two years plus, I mean, that could just be manufacturing metal from the uh, rad. Uh, when it was manufactured. Um, the fluid is not discolored at all. Um, I mean, it's got a little bit of a yellowy tinge to it, maybe, but uh, I think that's mostly just the plastic jar that it's in, uh, giving it that, that look. It's reflecting off... Actually, that's what it is. It's reflecting off the, the wooden table. But if I look at it this way, it's perfectly clear. So I would say that it is... Pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna say it held up pretty well and uh, I'm, I'm still seeing no signs of needing to do any kind of extreme rad flush or extreme system flush on this. Um, I don't wanna introduce chemicals into the loop that I don't need to. So I am going to just do the distilled water flush and we'll stay on track with that. Okay, so our block components are clean and dry. Uh, the algae has been removed. There actually wasn't a whole lot of algae to begin with um, and some warm soapy water with the toothbrush took care of what was there. So I'm confident that the loop actually isn't that dirty. So I'm not going to go ahead and do an aggressive chemical flush or anything like that on it. One thing to note though 
is that when you are going to be using a chemical to clean your block components or your loop, you're going to want to check with the manufacturer of your components first to see what is safe. If you take a look here, we'll go to the EK website and you'll see that they do suggest different forms of cleaning for different types of metals and components. And if we look here, we have a nickel plated copper block and the nickel plated copper block, it doesn't recommend using anything but soap and water to clean the block. And that's all we used. We didn't use any vinegar or ketchup or anything like that on it. Um, and as far as the plexiglass components go, um, it also recommends just warm soapy water and agitate it with a toothbrush, which is exactly what we did. Next thing you want to do is your coolant that came out of your system, you want to check the manufacturer's material safety data sheet to determine which way is the proper way to dispose of it. If you look at EK, they actually show that the disposal method um, is uh, to be determined by your local facility. Now, it also does say that it is, de it is safe to be a food additive and that it does not pollute water. Um, so I would say that you're probably pretty safe just putting it down the sink, um, but you may run into a coolant that is not safe to put down a sink. Now, if you really want to be an environmental hero, the best thing to do would be to put this into a sealed container print off this material safety data sheet and contact your local waste disposal center and find out uh, when you can bring it down and let them dispose of it safely. Most municipalities actually have a day once a month or twice a year or something like that where you can bring household chemicals down for disposal. And if you bring this label with that sheet, they will love you for it. Okay, so the next step in this process is going to be to put the block back together. So I, I might have said previously that I wasn't going to add any silicone grease to the gasket. Um, I am going to show you what I use. Uh, this is made for plumbing fixtures, but it is just basically silicone grease and it's safe on most materials. You don't have to do this, and especially if your gasket looks like it's in really good shape, it's not cracked, it's not dried out, anything like that, you don't need to. But if you do happen to put any kind of grease on it, I'm just doing this for extra precaution to try and prolong the life of the gasket. And all I'm gonna do is put a little bit on my finger and just run it around the perimeter of the gasket. A very light coating will go a long way. Um, this stuff will, uh, this will coat the rubber nicely and it will keep it in good shape for a long time. And I'm actually going to take this gasket now, I'm going to apply it directly to the block. So basically in order to put the block back together, we're just going to reverse the order that we took it apart in. I'm going to put the parts together that fit first um, inside the plexiglass cover here. Then I'm going to put the RGB surrounding or the RGB bracket back on. In order to do that, we're just going to put it around here. We're going to put the screws back in with the Allen key. And there is no reason to crank this down or anything like that. Just a snug fitting is fine. This is just an RGB plate. Uh, it's just a bracket. Not, uh, not necessary to crank this down because if you crank it right down, you're going to risk splitting the plexiglass and that would lead you to much bigger problems than uh, under tightening it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to place the mounting bracket back in here, just like so. Bring it up through here. And we are going to place the block back on where it belongs. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the screws back in and we're going to make sure that these screws are tight, but again, we're not going to over tighten them and try and crush the gasket or anything um, because we want these gaskets to last and crushing it is not going to help with that. All the screws are in hand tight. All we're going to do now is just give them a snug. I'm just going to use a cross bolt pattern here. 
so we get even pressure on the gasket as we go around and again just making sure they are all snug and that's it our CPU block is now back together and we're ready to reinstall it on the machine Next step is to clean the CPU block. I'm just gonna put some 90% plus isopropyl alcohol on the bottom here. And buff it up with a clean paper towel and make it nice and shiny again. Okay, once that's done, the next thing we're gonna do is use some of that isopropyl alcohol and we are going to remove the or the thermal paste off of the CPU. So I'm just going to use a paper towel to get some of the heavy stuff off here. Once the heavy stuff is off, we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol and give the CPU a little buff. Make sure it's a nice clean surface for mounting our block back onto. Now that the processor is nice and clean, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to reinstall the block. So I'm going to use the same thermal paste application that I did when I first built the machine. Um, basically the Ryzen 7 2700X has its silicone in a rectangle down the center here. So I'm just going to use the line method and I'm going to put a thin line of thermal paste right down the center of the CPU like that and I'll give a couple little extra dots here for good measure so that's the same thermal paste application that I used when I built the machine and I want to keep things consistent so that we can see the before and after testing Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reinstall the block. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the block on the front and the back plate on the back. I'm doing this vertically, so I am just going to hold the back plate in place. Um, you can put something underneath it to hold it if you're doing this um, on a, with the PC lying down, which I would recommend doing because this method is a pain in the butt, trying to do this while holding it. I'm gonna get the, screws in there not tight just snug or just uh, loose and get the bottom screw threaded in there and bottom screw threaded in there and same thing I'm just going to tighten this in a cross bolt pattern until they are all snug Okay, just make sure that all the screws stop turning and your block is securely in place. Next thing we're going to do is put our fittings back in. So that was this fitting on this side. And again, just make sure that they're snug and you can go ahead and hook your tubing back up. And tighten the collar. Just make sure everything's nice and snug. Okay, so for these type of fittings, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put it in hand tight first. And once you get it in hand tight, you can just give it a feel. So we're going to do just put them in hand tight first. And then because it's hard to grip the threads with your hand, take the Allen key, put it in and just give it a little turn. Make sure you don't crank it, but you'll feel it. It'll get tight, it'll stop, and then that's it. You don't want to go any further. If you could tighten it too much, you could crack the block, and you don't want that. Put your fitting back on. And that's it. We're all back together, so now we're gonna go ahead and fill the loop with some distilled water and give it a good flush. So before we fill it, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get a container. I'm gonna use an old Coke bottle. You're gonna to wanna to wash it out thoroughly and you're gonna to want to give it a couple of rinses with distilled water to make sure there's nothing inside it except for distilled water. You don't wanna get any Coke inside your loop. Um, 
and it's going to just make it a little bit easier to pour the distilled water in. Uh, whatever your setup, if you have to use a syringe, whatever, you're going to want to get that set up and get it clean so that you can put the distilled water into the loop. I've already cleaned this jug. I'm going to give it a couple of rinses with distilled water and then we'll start filling the loop. And the next thing I did was I actually took a power adapter that I use to that has a Molex to 110 volt AC uh, connection on it. Uh, I did that so that what we can do is control the pump totally separate from the PC with everything shut down on the PC, only using the power bar switch to shut the pump on and off. Um, make sure your paper towels are nice and lined up on all the components that you don't want to get wet. And the next thing you're going to want to do is start to fill your loop. So we're going to take some of the distilled water pour it into the top of the pump here. Make sure that drain valve is closed. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn the pump on and suck down that level. Watch for any leaks as it comes on and as soon as the pump runs out of liquid, shut it down, fill it up again and keep doing that until you can maintain a liquid level in the reservoir. Don't run the pump dry, you could risk burning it right out if you do that. And we're just gonna keep repeating this process until we, were, we can maintain a level because then we'll have enough water coming back from the loop into the reservoir Again, keep your eye on any leaks that may form. All right, so now you can see there's actually a level holding inside the reservoir. So I'm just gonna go ahead and top this up while it's running. And there we go, the loop is full. So you can see the water flowing through the blocks. That's good, there's lots of air bubbles right now, but as the more you run it, the, that'll come out. And so far, I'm not seeing any drips, any leaks. Everything's looking good. The block doesn't look like it's leaking at all, which is perfect. So that means that we use the right amount of force to put that gasket back together. And I'd say we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave this flush for two hours. I'm just gonna keep it on the pump. I'm gonna check it periodically, make sure that there's no, um, no leaks happening. And once that two hours is up, I'm just gonna drain the loop like we did in the beginning. I'm gonna refill it again with distilled water just like we did now. And then I'm going to leave it until we get our concentrate. So you've just seen the benchmarks that show that we got about a four degree gain on the CPU uh, after cleaning the loop. Um, it's been about three months since I shot the first part of this video, um, but basically to recap what happened is after I finished shooting that last segment, I let the loop circulate for another two hours. I drained it, I refilled it with distilled water, and then left it run overnight to get all the air out of the system. The next day I went in and I did a set of benchmarks on the system for the after profile. And what I did is before I ran the initial benchmarks before tearing down the loop, I set all the settings in manual um, in the BIOS and in, the, in, in MSI Afterburner. And I performed the exact same test before and after. There was absolutely no uh, updates done, there was nothing, this computer wasn't even connected to the internet, so it was impossible to do updates, no changes in the settings. And what I found was that the CPU got a four degree gain after cleaning the loop than it did before cleaning the loop. So basically I have a few ideas of why this is. Um, we never saw any gain on the GPU whatsoever. It basically sat at 38 degrees during this test um, and that was it. So. 
the Heaven benchmark wasn't necessarily maxing out the GPU. So that could be one reason why. Now I did run Time Spy Extreme as well, and it didn't seem to really give me much gain on the GPU either. So my kind of takeaway from that is A, I never cleaned the block on the GPU. So if there was anything built up in there, I didn't help anything by flushing any more water through it. All I did was uh, drain and refill that, but I did clean the CPU block. The other thing is, I don't think the 1080 Ti really throws that much heat. Um, and I think a water block like this is a little overkill for it. So that could be another reason why there wasn't really much gain um, in temperature after cleaning the loop. And basically my other theory is that the CPU is what was really throwing the heat into the loop. And I think that the CPU um, basically benefited mostly from cleaning the dust off of the intake on the PC. Um, now it could have been uh, cleaning the CPU block, it could have been the thermal paste application was different. I mean I tried to keep it the same but it, it, it might have effectively been a little bit different. Um, but I really think it boiled down to cleaning the dust out of the PC. So it was good that I did a coolant flush on the thing. It was good that I cleaned the, P the CPU block. But I think the thing that benefited the temperatures in this thing most of all was cleaning the dust out of the thing. And that's something you can do any day. It takes 10 minutes to take it outside, blow it off with some compressed air, pull the filters out, vacuum them off, whatever you got to do uh, to get it clean. It's uh, good general maintenance on your PC. Another couple of takeaways here is just that I don't think an aggressive chemical flush is necessary on a loop if it is in generally good condition. And also, if you used a good um, coolant like I did with the cryofuel, uh, again, I'm giving it my personal endorsement just because I, it worked for me for two years. There was no algae, there was no corrosion. Um, and I think because I used that, there was no need to do an aggressive cleaning on it. I didn't use vinegar, I didn't use any chemical solution. I mean, you can go out and spend 70 bucks on chemical cleaners for your cooling loop, but it might not be necessary. And in fact, they are pretty aggressive and they can cause corrosion. They can do sometimes more harm than good um, when it comes to cleaning, and especially when you have different materials in your loop. So I would call this little project a pretty good success. Um, we gained four degrees on the CPU, we cleaned the dust out of the thing. We got it looking good again. Um, it took some time, but we also tore apart the CPU block, found out there was no corrosion, no algae. We didn't see any signs of corrosion or algae in the rest of the loop. And yeah, I think it was a good test um, to see just how what kind of condition the loop was in. And we gained a little bit of heat and some cleanliness at the same time. So I apologize for this video being so long, and I don't know if you can tell, but this part that I'm shooting right now is actually three months after the initial shoot. Um, this has been sitting here for three months. That's evaporation. That wasn't dumped out anywhere. That's just been sitting there without a lid evaporating on the desk back here. Um, so yeah, anyway, the next step for this machine now is to upgrade it to the Ryzen 9 3900X. So expect that video to be out to you soon. Um, and then I'll be happy to be able to use my machine again because I've been using a test bench with a 3700X for basically everything for the last three months. Anyway, uh, again, I'm sorry this video was so long. I'll try to keep them shorter in the future, but I think there's a lot of valuable information that uh, needed to be said and some things that I wanted to show um, in this video. So thank you for tuning into Tech Progress. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me some comments, uh, some personal experiences in the, in the comments below. And uh, please get subscribed for more great tech videos in the future. I hope to have them out on a monthly basis now or hopefully more frequently. I'm back into it now, so uh, you'll, can, you could expect some more videos to be coming out soon. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.